Today we are going to be making some layered clothing. I'm going to be going into an in-depth tutorial so it's going to be fairly long. I'm going to try to break it up into pieces so if there's a specific thing you want to watch then I'm going to show you that. But if you want to see the whole process, then this is going to be the video for you. Make sure that you have a basic understanding of Blender. I'm giving you like kind of an intermediate style video. But if you've been wanting to learn how to make layered clothing so that you can join the UGC program on Roblox and make some money and all that good stuff, then I'm going to be teaching you how to do that today. So if that's something that interests you, then you can keep watching. Let's turn on some music and get into the video. We're gonna start off by deleting the big old cube because we don't need that little cube. And now we're going to import something called Lambert. This is basically the cage of the avatar, but what I've done is I've put so many heckin' triangles into it so that I can make good masking for our avatar. So then we open up the sculpt mode. And in sculpt mode, if you're making something that you want to be the same on each side, then you can turn on this little mirroring tool and then we're going to center Lambert. We're going to try to make a nice muscle tee shape. I'm going to cut this part and then we're going to bring it down to here. And now we have this basic shape. We're going to pull it off the shoulders. So maybe what we want to do is just give it like a little extra. Just to make it a little easier when we're going to pop it off. Yeah. So now that we kind of have our basic shape, I like to go to mask and go to brush and make it a little bit harder. Kind of just like improve the edge here. And then what I like to do is go into mask and sharpen the mask. And we're gonna sharpen it one more time. And now the fun part, we're gonna go to mask and we're gonna go to mask extract. Don't extract a solid and we're gonna hit okay. And I have another add-on that I got. It is a license. So it's another thing that you have to purchase, but if it's something you're interested in, then I'll link it in the description. It's not super expensive. I think it's like $4 a month, so now we're at $35 a month because of the Adobe subscription and this thing. This is very helpful because you have a limit for your UGC, which should be under 4,000 triangles. We'll decimate it, but in a clean way. Decimating is just removing a bunch of triangles. So we hit X and then I like to quad count to 1,000 because that generally looks nice. So now we're going to remesh it. and it creates a duplicate one so it doesn't remove the one that you made in case you're like, oh, I want to make a change and then remake it. So now we have this mesh and I'm just going to name it the muscle key. And the next step is to inflate it. And again, I have mirroring on so that I don't have to inflate it on all sides. What I can do now is extend it outward because it is a muscle tee. And what I've noticed is that I get comments on my stuff and they seem to like it when it looks bulky on them because then it makes them feel more muscular. So for me, I'm going to stylistically make it a little bulkier so that they can feel like the muscular, cool person that they are. And the edges are kind of funny looking, but I think it's fine because I'm just gonna say it's fine. So now we got our cute little muscle tee thing going on and we're going to start trying to give it some wrinkles. I'm gonna go off of this reference that I have. I don't know too much about clothing anatomy, but when you follow references, it can be kind of easy to understand it. We want to mark sharp on things that we want to be a little sharper. This is called object data properties and we're going to go to normals and we're going to auto smooth it and we're going to put it up all the way. So here we go. We have this neat little shape. It looks pretty good on Lambert and now we're going to cut it up. Oh, here, yeah, duh. Okay, it's unwrapped. And again, I have a third plugin here called Text Tool. Um, I don't remember how much this one it was, but it couldn't have been more than a few dollars. So we're gonna go into UV Sync Selection, I think, 
and then we're going to rectify it so that it becomes straight and so we don't have warped textures going on. You don't want to do it for these because those have to kind of be funny looking. So we're going to close text tool now. So now we have this guy. Oh, I like Heather. I like Heather color. I think it is very pretty. We're just gonna scale it down. And I'm gonna show you a fun trick. You add a black mask, which removes the texture from everything. You can hit, which is called polygon fill. And, and then now you see all the polygons and it's at one. If it's at zero, then it's deleting the poly. So we wanna keep it at one. And we're gonna specifically select this and this and these interior bits. We're gonna add a second texture and then we're gonna make it really tiny. So I kind of want to start off with a tan color, which looks good. I'm kind of following the reference that I have. And then what I can do is I can pop the color AD and then we can move it into here as well. So we're gonna go to export texture and we chose our folder. I put it in this tan muscle tank folder because I want to kind of organize things and then I export. And then now we have a base color, a metallic, a roughness, a normal map, a height, a normal open GL. We're gonna go back into Blender now. Shading, add a new texture. Go to muscle tank tan. We're gonna add the base color. And then we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna do the same thing for the metallic, I copy it again, put it in the roughness too. Finally, we want to add a normal map. So this is different. This is the only different thing that's gonna happen. Normal map, not normal, just normal map. Put it into the normal. We're gonna copy this again. We're gonna put the color into the color. We're going to choose open GL. And now we have this epic texture here. I made a little mistake in trying to show you guys how to import. So I'm just going back here and I'm gonna show you that you take your LC armature and then you ignore leaf bone and you also want to make sure automatic bone orientation is selected and then you can import it. And first things first, we're going to copy muscle T, the cage, and we're gonna make sure that we name the outer cage and the inner cage muscle T so that it makes sense to Roblox when we import it. Now, first we select muscle T and then we make sure that the armature is selected. We hit control P. We want to set the, the muscle T to the parent, which is the armature, with automatic weights. So then we go into weight paint mode and we're just gonna go in here and see if the muscle T exists in there. So we're gonna go to root and just absolutely make sure that it has no agency over it. So what I do is I go into this paint mask mode. When you hit shift K, it'll auto fill it to a color. So we want to auto fill it to absolutely no weight because then it won't mess with it. So we go into humanoid root node and we're gonna do that again. And I'm assuming head might have some control, but I don't see it having control, but we're just gonna hit it anyways, just to make sure. We're gonna go lower torso, go back to gradient. We're going to give the bottom pretty heavy agency and upper torso. We're gonna go downward. We're going to give it less agency on the arms. The left upper arm. And we're gonna remove a lot of that here. And select the armature. Then you can go to pose mode and see how it messes with things. Right now, what I'm doing is using inflate mode to kind of help me with putting the outer cage around this object. You want to make sure that you don't make it too bulky because expecting a player to layer something over this, you want it to look nice. What we are going to do is when you export this, you export as an FBX and then you make sure that you don't have selected objects on. And then you also wanna make sure that you set it to unit scale so that it matches up with Roblox's scale. Go to accessory fitting tool and have that open, but first I'm gonna import using the import 3D. I select the muscle tee. It's gonna be a clothing item. We want it to be a shirt. You can kind of see it fit on different bodies. Oh, he's skinny. <laughs> you can even check out what it looks like when they're running around. We gotta ignore some of these because it's a little buggy. It looks normal when you actually put it on an avatar. So I'm not too concerned when there's funny things going on here. Like I've seen that happen before, but it does not reflect the actual thing. And we're gonna generate the shirt. So we're happy with it. And now generally what I do is I make a million colors so that everybody can be catered to and then I upload it to Roblox. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. I will show you more things. I will show you game development things and modeling things and 
scripting things because I like to do all of those things. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. And, and show off what you're making to me on Twitter because I want to see your work.